attract who you are, not who you want. You may want to attract a governor into your life. You may want to attract a cabinet secretary into your life. You may want to attract a corporate leader. In reality, however, you don't attract who you want. You attract who you are. Like begets like. Just like a young tree, the gardener shapes it and it takes all the shapes that the gardener so desires. So must you reproduce yourself in the life of your child. Kids are like tape recorders, watching your every move, listening to your every speech, and eventually you duplicate yourself into their lives. You see what I do in my house every evening? I go and kneel by the bedside of my two children. I bless them every day. I pray for them every day. If I make a mistake of not doing that, they will demand it because it was installed before they learned how to speak. It's a culture that I cultivated. Number four, connect with your child. Connect with your child. To connect means to create the time, to deliberately create the time. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have time for what we value. As I speak to you tonight, there's a phone call that can come and you walk out on me, irrespective of what I'm sharing. There are other people who will be looking for you in the course of this fellowship, but you may never remember to call them back. Tomorrow morning, you will call people, depending on who you value, and in the order of priority on how you value them. Put it otherwise. We have time for what we value. We have time for who we value. So if you are struggling to choose between making money and your children, if you are struggling to balance between work and your children, you might as well quote me, you don't value your children, you are in deception. Now, I, I want to pick two characters for you, and I trust and hope no one will use this message or distort it for whatever reason. I have deep honor and respect for the late President Nelson Mandela. I honestly believe he was larger than life. He was the greatest icon in our generation by the time he died. But I've often wondered, although we are told he may have suffered 27 years in jail, among many others, he lost three of his own children to HIV AIDS. Is it possible? Don't answer me. Food for thought. Is it possible? Is it possible? Deep down his heart, he may have questioned his priorities. He may have wondered, was it worth it to save a great nation out of the forces of apartheid at the expense of my own children? If I needed to save a great nation and the world at large, then did I need to start a family? Food for thought. I wonder how many listening to this voice tonight would want to reach the epic of their career ladder and lose their own children to HIV AIDS, to drug abuse, to violence, to crime. The only true Nobel laureate from this nation, Professor Agari Mathai, on her deathbed, it was reported in the local dailies that the one thing she regretted is that she never spent enough time with her own children. If I may paraphrase the good professor, she learned a little bit too late that parental responsibilities cannot be derogated. You can't pick it up from where you left after gaining the fame and the fortune and then pick it up. The growth of children is irreversible. It won't wait for you to put up apartments and buy land and shares and stocks and then pick it up from your busy schedules from where you left. Once you lose every stage, the change is irreversible. A friend of mine one time told me something very interesting. He was kajaked, taken to Gong Hills. And the crooks were so convinced that he was refusing to part with money. But they were so gracious to give him some five minutes to make a last call. And they told him, look, we're going to give you a phone because we're going to kill you in just a moment. Make a phone call to whoever you may want. Please talk to me, talk to me, talk to me if you can. Who do you think he called? His wife. Oh, what do you think he said? What do you think he said? Talk to me, talk to me. What do you think he said? Kuna mawe nilikuwa ni miyata hapo ya kujega siyo kimao. Ile mjego si kumaliza. Do you think that's what he said? Did he call his boss? 
Obviously, he's still alive. That's why he gave me the story. So don't be sad. <laughs> they, they released him. But if you really want to know the most critical.